with uh, Jay Blakeson and Stephen Garrett, who are the creative team behind Culprit's new crime series on Hulu. Just to kick things off, can you guys tell me a little bit about your idea for the series and how it got started? Um, well, I bought the rights to a book called Culprit's Colon. The heist was just the beginning. And I thought it was a delicious idea because most heist stories, you see the planning, you see the execution, and then it ends. And this story pretty much began where most end. And Jay and I knew each other, liked each other, so I brought the book to Jay, the title, and the rest was his story. Uh, so then I, I like the central concept, which is what would you do if you had like a big bag of money and you could start again and choose any life and go anywhere in the world you wanted, what would you do? Because we have all these characters in the show who've been faced with that decision and what they decided to do and how they use that money and how they use their, their freedom to build a new life, that tells a a lot about them and then finding them in their new lives and seeing how difficult it is to sort of, you know, get, start again with your, you know, looking over the shoulder the whole time was really interesting to me. So, you know, it started with that sort of central idea from, from that book. And then I sort of just started spinning off ideas from there and we sort of made it, made it our own thing. Yeah. And then you also have a really neat story going on because we're seeing the current lives and then we're also flashing back to the heist and how they all got to this situation to begin with. What was the planning for that like? How do you structure out what you want to happen when and keep that drama going? Um, well, most of it's quite instinctive to me. I didn't really I didn't really plan it very well. I just kind of had it in my head. Um, and I, I kind of felt that, you know, I, I write like a, a viewer watches that I, if I'm getting to the end of a sequence and I'm like, well, I want to, I'm getting close to sort of like wanting to know what happens next. Then I will sort of like jump somewhere else because then I can tease the audience. And then also if you've got like this big, like got an emotional scene that's quite sort of quiet and it's kind of domestic, you then sort of smack straight into like action and gunfire and cars crashing that you, you know, you can sort of like, you know, zig and zag with your audience and sort of not give them whiplash, but sort of keep keep them really interested to keep them on the edge of their seat. And so for me, you know, there was an instinctive way that it was written. And then that all changes when you get into the edit, when you've got it all, because then it all just becomes about the rhythm of the show, the rhythm of the performances and the emotions of what, what you're finding. And so like, you know, our three editors who are all fantastic did, did amazing work finding exactly the right placement of where those should be, which is more or less like the script, but you know, it sort of was like precision surgery to make it to make it work properly. Well, I think the effect is great. You definitely described my feeling of like I would watch a scene and then say, oh, I really want to know what happens next. And then it's somewhere else and you have to wait to find out. <laughs> um, so I think the tension and the world building is really great here. Um, is there anything else about culprits that you think is maybe different from other crime shows or that you're really proud of being able to achieve in the series? I think one of the brilliant things that Jay did when he he made Joe our hero, the central character, is that, you know, it's, we're all very familiar with the tropes of, of heist movies. And as Jay said, he loves playing with those. And the character of Joe is normally someone, he's called Muscle, he's the bodyguard. The truth is, in, in most stories like this, he'll have two lines and he'll die before the end of the first episode. So the idea is to bring the so-called little guy to the fore and to celebrate them because they're people too. And in this case, way more interesting than people who are seemingly random. Yeah, and he's got hopes and dreams of his own. It's like everybody in a film who gets like shot in that one scene, you know, the, the big the big guy standing behind the famous guy, you know, those characters are like families and kids and they drop them off at school. And like, you know, for me, that's the interesting thing is that, you know, crime happens in the real world and it happens in plain sight and it happens all around us. It doesn't happen over there in shady rooms most of the time, smoky back, back rooms. It's it's happening in plain sight all around us, in our government and in, in everywhere. So, you know, you you know, the the fact that, you know, he is just like a normal guy who's got hopes and dreams, but you can but in every other show he he wouldn't be that. That, you know, for me that was really interesting and I'm glad we got to play with that. Yeah, definitely. And I think too sorry, I was just gonna say so Jay's sort of celebration of the ordinary people in ordinary lives. When we were first talking about this and he was first sort of pitching me his take on the idea, he said, imagine you've got a guy and he's driving his kids to school and he realizes he's being followed by someone who might be trying to kill him. And suddenly one of the kids wants to pee and has to pee straight away. And so you've suddenly got this awful tension of someone's trying to kill you, but you've got to take your kid to find a toilet somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So there's all that delicious, just ordinariness, but making it very heightened. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that gives everyone watching 
you know, an easier in too, because more of us have experienced the child complaining they really have to pee right this second right now uh, than, you know, being chased by a gunman. But you get the, I mean, the tension it, of both. Yeah, in a way, it's more stressful than being chased by a gunman, right? Because at least a gunman, you, can, you might be able to reason with them. You can't reason with like a, a six-year-old who needs the bathroom. It's like, you know, it's it's like a force of nature. Absolutely true. You have an incredible cast in this series. Everyone is so great. Tell me a little bit about your casting process and how you found everybody to play these amazing roles. I mean, we uh, we had a great casting director and, you know, you work with them to like make lists of people that you like. And it's, the, it's, it's sort of the usual boring thing of like you make lists and you see who's available. But then when you drill down on it, you have like the really great stuff is where you see people read the material. And from that point, you know, before that, it's just been on a page and it's been in my head. But then when they start reading it, the characters really start to come alive and these different actors do different interpretations. And then one will walk in and they'll do it in such a way you're like, oh, they're amazing. <laughs> no, we have to have them in the show. And that's so exciting. And, you know, a lot of these actors are people I've seen in other things. So like, you know, Neve and Kirby and Nathan, they'd all been doing great work in other shows. Um, and so it's really exciting to have them in here to place different characters and give them opportunities to really sort of like spread their wings and and shine. So you know, for, for me, it's just like, you know, you, you're always you're always hoping that the person who's going to read for you is going to be amazing. And we were so lucky with with Nathan, who when you know, when he came in and he read the material uh, immediately, he was just had this sort of element to him that was really ambiguous and interesting and had so much sort of empathy and kindness that we needed for for joe but then also could very quickly switch to this sort of dangerous edgy kind of dark <laughs> energy which you needed for david and sort of that internal struggle with him was there in that read and so uh you know it was very exciting to be able to cast him in the shot absolutely now culprits is coming to hulu december 8th everyone can stream it there then give me your quick pitch like 10 seconds or less why should everybody go check out the show well Culprits is a bold, unique, cinematic, tense, edge of your seat TV show, which is bold and bright and entertaining and fun, uh, and then leaves you thinking about it a little bit afterwards. And um, if you've heard people like us say you've never seen anything like it and then been a bit shortchanged, trust me, you've never seen anything like it. That's fair. That's a, that's a good qualifier. I like that. <laughs> All right. Thank you both so much for talking with me and best of luck with the show. I really enjoyed it. I hope everybody goes and checks it out. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.